uh, Colonel, retired Miri Eisen, who is now the director of the International Institute for Counterterrorism at Reichman University. Miri, thank you so much for being with me. I want to, uh, before we begin this interview, I want to play another sound bite from that press conference, very important press conference hours ago yeah. from the prime minister and uh, the defense minister, where the defense minister of Israel talked about the uh, evolving threat and the violence and attacks between the IDF and Hezbollah and the threat from Hezbollah. Here's what Yoav Gallant had to say. For you, what would be that grave mistake that if Nasrallah makes that mistake, Israel will attack? What will be the red line? Because your position that was published in the past that perhaps Israel should take a preemptive, preventive strike. If you hear that we had attacked in Beirut, then you will understand that he had crossed the red line. What is your reaction to uh, that answer? And I guess the, cons the, the questions about how deep into Lebanon, the IDF is willing to counterattack. Jeff, isn't it the question that we all want to understand right now? This is not just an Israel-Hamas war. Hamas started this horrific war. We are going against Hamas. Hezbollah in Lebanon has joined in from day one, but they've joined in at a low level. And the question here is, are they going, are they, Hezbollah, going to choose to up the level of intervention? They have been attacking inside the state of Israel from October 7th. They have been firing rockets and mortars and anti-tank missiles. As Robert was describing before, they've added in drones, payloads, um, UAVs, all of the different capabilities. And together with that, the other Iranian Shiite proxies have been firing into Lebanon as well well. We have had casualties on the um, in the north. It's not in Lebanon. It's in the north in Israel from these attacks. We have been very good, very fine at trying to stop that. There have been casualties, both injured and wounded. So when you say, what is the red line? That is behind Every single decision now inside Israel is that the actions that we're taking inside the Gaza Strip against Hamas, Hezbollah is choosing yes or no to use it as a threat against Israel. Just think of the irony that we have the one horrific, atrocious terror organization in its actions as it did from the South, and we have a second, much more, I don't want to say capable, but armed terror organization in Lebanon in a very similar way, part of the population, in the population, outside of the population, yet again, not sovereign, who is consistently attacking us from Lebanon. And so in this situation, and Israel has to decide what we'll do. We have enough capability to do both. Um, the question is always going to be, what is our aim? What do we want to do? What does the world look at this as if it is Israel's problem and not the entire international community's problem? Mm. Uh, stay with us for a second. I want to bring into this conversation here in studio our senior correspondent, Owen Alterman. Uh, Owen, I also want to eyes towards as, of course, uh, Israel continues to guard the northern border and, and deal with the ever-constant threat from Hezbollah, the south continues uh, to be a, a focal point. And there is, there does seem to be, as I mentioned before, a turning point with uh, Israeli leadership saying Hamas has totally lost control of North, of North Gaza. We see these humanitarian quarter, quarters opening for longer and longer. Hamas's grip on the population appears slowly to be loosening. And yet, perhaps today, in the hours to come, there might be a decisive battle in the tunnels underneath this massive hospital where soon, in, in the next few hours perhaps, babies, children, amputees, the elderly, will have to be evacuated. Uh, give us your sense of how this may unfold and the impact domestically and also for a global audience. Dramatic, delicate, and obviously really difficult. But Jeff, first of all, welcome back. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I mean, horrible circumstances. Of course, but we at the channel are thrilled to have you back. If you're a new viewer, uh, understand Jeff is, uh, was a longtime anchor of ours and came back, I guess, got called up by reserve for reserve duty in a sense. Not the first person from the Lost Tribes of I-24 News to come back. But Jeff, welcome back. And speak, I think, for everybody in our newsroom, we're thrilled to have you back. You. Of course, horrible circumstances. Uh, and speaking of horrible circumstances, uh, obviously the injured people at Chief of Hospital the, the terror bases that were cynically and cruelly and criminally dug under the hospital and the, the difficult situation for the military in handling this. Look, uh, the military is obviously going to have to be very, very careful here. Uh, 
they by all accounts are, but there is no margin for error, not little margin for error. I would say no margin for error uh, between being able to be able to take this important military target, uh, but without causing civilian casualties, some of the most vulnerable people there. Uh, we understand that civilians who took shelter in the hospital, healthy civilians who went there as a place of refuge, if you will, in northern Gaza, have by and large left. So the people there are the people who, in a sense, are the most difficult the to high, move. The most highly vulnerable people exactly. who are not mobile. Exactly. First thing to caution viewers, I, I think none of us should believe all of the information coming out of Gaza. It's an important caveat in, in the day-to-day -day of this war. It's even more important now with Shifa Hospital to try to be very, very careful and understand and vet and listen to trusted sources about exactly what the situation is inside that building. Because there's a lot of uncertainty. There are a lot of actors who have an interest, for various reasons, in either giving misleading information or intentional disinformation. So we all have to be very, very careful. But you're right, Jeff, it's an important milestone in the war. This is Hamas's Pentagon. But I think it's been said over the last 24 hours, and it bears repeating, this is not the end of the process and the end of the task. And while it's true that above ground in northern Gaza, the military feels confident enough in saying that Hamas has lost control of the territory, it's obviously an important objective of this war, right? The whole point of this war is for Hamas to lose control of the territory. But there are still potentially the, terrors, the, the terror tunnels underneath and the infrastructure underneath. And, of course, the hospital where the task has not been completed because of just how difficult and delicate and dramatic it is. And then, of course, there's the question of the entire southern part of the Gaza Strip, where there hasn't been significant military activity for the obvious reason that that's where the civilians have gone. But what exactly does the military do and how does it handle that? Because